Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stud and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on review. Today, as you can see, I'm taking a look at a rather interesting Payware Ultralight Aircraft. The UL Stride by Papercraft Aero Design. Now this product retails for €9.60, basically €10, Euros, on Sim Market, which comes in to around £8 or €12. US dollars. So in that case, it's relatively inexpensive, but is it still worth it? Stick around as I take a look at this certainly unique aircraft. Now one thing I'd like to point out, and bear this in mind, is that this is the first release of this product. Now of course, as it's payware, this means it must meet some sort of standard, but just bear in mind it has not reached its full potential yet. And, of course, there's certainly room for improvement. I'll be giving my pros and cons at the end of this video. So we're here at Madeira to take a look at this aircraft. I've already done some flying, so I know how the aircraft handles. The exterior is a mixed bag in my opinion. The textures are very nice, although I'd like a bit more detail. Getting right up close, you can see while the textures they've chosen look nice and quite good quality. There's not much detail on there. Maybe some scratches or some shiny parts would make it look nicer, but that's just my opinion. As always, if you want to disagree or if you agree with me, put them in the comments down below. Now, of course, this isn't your normal Cessna. This is, of course, an ultralight. And it's got one big wing on the top. Now, in my opinion, it's not horrific, but it's also not fantastic. The front looks very nice, but as you get to the back, it looks a bit too pixelated in my opinion. Hopefully they'll increase the quality of these textures down the line. But now let's hop into the cockpit. Yeah, in my opinion, the cockpit is a bit of a letdown. I'm not going to say it's horrific, but it's also not as good as it should be. Reminds me quite a bit like Flight Simulator X. Of course, the cockpit's going to be simple. This is a simple aircraft but there is very little detail here. They've tried to put some scratches and scuffs on, but you can just see it's a layered texture. It will, and I imagine it will improve in the future, but at the moment, this does not look good in my opinion. There's freeware products out there that have done a fantastic job, and you don't have to pay nine euros for the privilege. These are, of course, stock Microsoft Flight Simulator instruments, which I don't have a problem with as long as they put some attention to detail in other parts. And sadly, in my opinion, they haven't met up to that. However, looking around the rest of the cockpit, the detail on parts near the landing gear, and of course the bar you use to control the aircraft, well, they're satisfactory in my opinion. They look very nice. Changing the weather as well, you can see they've actually done something here that makes the sun shine through the white part more than it does in the greyish area, and I think that's something really nice they've done up there. A nice bit of attention to detail, I'll commend them for that. Starting up the aircraft is incredibly easy, basically you turn your battery on, you turn your fuel switch on, and you twist the magneto. Let's just run through that. Master switch, fuel switch. I do find that I have to use the avionics master on my honeycomb yoke. That's just an incompatibility with my honeycomb yoke. So if you've got a switch panel or anything, you may find you're in a bit of a pickle there. Because of course, there's no avionics button in the cockpit. That's a massive issue. But aside from that, you twist the master switch and the aircraft starts up. In addition to that, while there is a parking brake, there's no parking brake button in the cockpit. So you're going to have to rely on B. Now something you'll find out in a minute is that this aircraft has yaw. Now of course you cannot see a rudder and when I move my rudder pedals not even the nose wheel moves. However in the air it would appear the aircraft does respond to my rudder pedals and yaw does take effect while there is no movement on the aircraft. Now this to me would point to something pretty depressing. They've ported over a flight model from one of the default Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft and that is not up to scratch. Unless I'm missing something, I cannot see any way for your to take effect. So there's no rudders. Sometimes in these aircraft you have rudders on the back of the gear around this kind of area. But I'm not seeing that. I'm also not seeing nose wheel move. So something doesn't add up there in my opinion. Roll of course works and you can see our wing up there twists in response. 
and I have to say it moves pretty well now you've got those guys hands going through it but hey um, you guys can see where this product is going let's take it for a flight now now on takeoff you can hear the engine powers up and it sounds pretty nice it might be default sounds but at least they do change in variation to the amount of power you supply Speaking of power you supply, that just popped into my head. Where is the where, where is the throttle unit? There's literally no way to supply power. Unless I'm missing something. Um, that That's not right. That just popped into my head. So I should have noticed that before. I didn't. That's not good enough, is it really? No power. No way to supply power in the cockpit. That's just not on, is it really? Anyway, once we're up in the air, the aircraft handles okay, I guess. Nothing special here, it doesn't really feel like an ultralight, it more feels like a Cessna. On top of that, trim, rudder trim and elevator trim takes effect, which once again wouldn't add up with this aircraft because there's no way to input that. So something is not adding up here. Aside from that, it does look rather nice, it has to be said. It's a nice model. Ignoring the lack of attention to detail, it looks nice from afar and can make some pretty awesome screenshots. If this is your thing, VFR sightseeing, and you don't worry about the cockpit, you don't worry about having a semi-realistic aircraft, then this is worth €9. Euros. But if you're like the majority of us, and want a semi-functional cockpit that you can actually control with a mouse instead of having to rely on external hardware, mm, this one is probably not for you. Now landing in this aircraft is interesting, there's no way to reduce your speed, so you do have to rely on how you control the aircraft, there's no external flaps or anything. And I do feel it's slightly overpowered. I haven't flown an ultralight before, but I don't imagine they require this much runway to land. You can also see your taking effect there. There's, of course, no rudder pedals. You can't see them in the cockpit. For me, that's very strange. There is a radio, although you can't tune it unless you've got an external radio panel or apply some buttons to it. So, yeah, I mean, I am really gritting my teeth at this point. It's, it's not worth it. It really isn't, in my opinion. Let's hop back onto the ground, and I'll go through my thoughts. So, there we have it, pros and cons. Well, the pro is it's rather cheap, so if you did spend money on this, at least you're not missing out on too much. On top of that, sounds are okay, and modelling is okay. That is the general positives. There's not much more else. You can see they put most of their time into the external model, and I would say that's paid off, kind of. But there's plenty of negatives, and the cockpit is the main one. There's basically no way for you to put any throttle input in, unless you want to use your keyboard, you can't use your mouse, and you can't actually see how much power you're putting in, unless you've got a throttle quadrant like I have. On top of that, there seems to be that weird thing with your... I can use the rudder pedals and it takes effect, but of course, where are the rudders? That just doesn't add up at all, I mean full stop, there's no question there. It's either they've taken the default flight model, adjusted it a bit or apl and applied it to this aircraft, or I don't know, I really don't, but there we go guys. I would not recommend this just yet, but the developer has said they're working on it, so hopefully we can see this aircraft improved in the future. Madeira, by the way, is fantastic to fly around, it's perfect for any sightseeing around these beautiful Portuguese islands, but there we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this add-on review, thanks once again to all of you, every single one of you for watching, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Stick around for more videos like this, I do them as frequently as I can, and as I get closer to 10,000 subscribers, you'll notice I start doing some real-life flight training as well, so stick around for that. Thanks once again to my first class and business class channel members, my first class channel members get a shout out on the screen now. If you want exclusive perks, click that join button right now, there's plenty of exciting stuff to dig your teeth into when you become a channel member. But from me today, that is all, bye bye.